Guys, it's Michael Todd and Mother Tucker's Antiques. She was saying. <laughs> There's <Hi. you. laughs> You guys, we are still in Hanover. Hanover we're yep. still in Hanover and we are at Yester Yesteryear. We're yeah. at Yesteryear. <laughs> yep. The snack capital of the world. It's Hanover, Pennsylvania. That is true. You're gonna gain Pretzels, 10 pounds potato here. chips. <laughs> 10 pounds. Nothing good for you, but yep. definitely tasty. Guys, we are going to get inside, see if we can't find anything <laughs> for sale. I'm here. For resale, collecting, who knows? Let's do it, guys. Here we go. This place is huge, you guys. It's massive. Alrighty guys, here we go. We're getting a quick panorama shot. I was a little worried, but Jason was saying that, you know, there are quite a few vendors and there are that were selling like newer-ish vintage antique inspired. So he didn't really take the time to film those. Now, here we are right off the entrance. There are some cases, um, a lot of different kinds of things to see. We were definitely checking them out. You never know, folks. The thing that I caught my eye, these are absolutely beautiful. It is a set of 12 place card holders. Now, it turns out they are, in fact, Dresden. They were mar marked Germany. They are so extraordinarily detailed. Look at how beautiful and delicate they are. Out of all of them, there was but one small chip to one tiny little flower. There was 12 marked at $100 and there was a 30% off sale. And down below it, we go from Dresden to Edward Mobley to USA Ona, a champion vase here. I picked it all up, you guys. Everything was 30% off. It was amazing. I got her. We got the Edward Mobley. And here is a more detailed shot of those beautiful Dresden uh, floral place card holders. I love these. They're tiny little works of art. So excited to be able to pick those up. Now we are still here in the front and what immediately caught my eye were these master crafters, um, plastic clocks here. Now you plug them in and they do light. I've never seen the fireplace before. Um, that was pretty amazing. I was very tempted by it. Uh, we've got some very gilded, Gilded Age, the Art Nouveau style lamps here. Right above, we're seeing another Master Crafter. This one has his bell. Um, you saw in the last video, Jason found one. This one is marked at $100 of the condition. Is much better. Um, again, they light up. They have like little, if you will, animatronics. Um, amazing, kitschy, fun clocks. But I did pass on those because they were a little too expensive. So here we are headed into the back. Again, we've got a lot of trains. Um, not really my thing. Model trains, I should say. Um, but there's quite a few. We've got a lot of books. A lot of, more of them are contemporary. So Tina was just explaining, you know, we typically go by, past this area. Um, again, it, it's more modern fiction. So you're not seeing like vintage or antique books here though i'm sure there were a few there was just so many many it was a bit daunting um to want to have to go through those so here i'm giving you a big old panorama shot there and we've entered into the area that we're really going to shop first up i am seeing a fenton little blue opalescent it is of course in the lily of the valley you all know that i love this pattern i love opalescence it was priced fairly, but a bell, uh, you know, if it was a fairy lamp, if it was a vase, a little compote, most certainly. Now, this vendor's booth really caught my eye. There was a lot of small, it appeared to be very kitschy kind of items, but it was some kind of vintage with contemporary. Nothing really was sparking my interest. You're seeing some vintage plush there. I love, loved the Muppet Babies when I was a kid. Of course, Bert and Ernie were peeking out there at you. You know, hey, you got to go in. If you don't go in, you never know. A lot of like 80s, 90s bisque figurines. Not that there's necessarily anything wrong with those, but they're going to need a couple of years before they become desirable or collectible. Um, again, a lot of vintage and antique goods really speak to a certain nostalgia. Um, and we're just not there yet, though we are fast approaching, I will say. Disturbingly, we are fast approaching.
We've got a lot of uranium and Vaseline. Loved that Vaseline. That does appear to be imperial to me with those um, dolphin feet there. We got some great uranium glass. Tina Girl was going off there. <laughs> No, she was. <laughs> um, we've got we got milk glasses. See, Mother Tuckers is used to being able to say whatever you want while I'm filming. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I'm going to do a voice. <laughs> okay, so up next, I am very attracted to these pieces. It is definitely an elaborate antique piece the vendor does have it marked possibly as mycin um now i did turn it over it i can't remember if it did or did not i don't think it i know it did have its um blue markings on it i was a little confused because the eyes aren't necessarily very um dresden-esque if you will or pardon me mycin um the detailing was good that was spot on um mycin had a tendency to stay away from like the little dots though the dots are more indicative of later japan pieces now i loved this absolutely amazing decanter um to me it's very indian um, in style aesthetics the spout was broken off unfortunately look at the hand painting on this or enameling i loved the detailing it was very busy i know that it's not necessarily for everybody but i loved it but it was damaged here we've got everybody's favorite little picnic basket, picnic basket robber. Um, that's right. We've got Yogi the bear. He is marked at $35. And I was like, whoa, that's a good deal. It did say as is. And then I turned it over and I was like, ah, <laughs> there, I, there's a lot of things I'll repair. That's something I can't. Next door to Yogi there were these great little Knickerbocker hand puppets. That was actually supposed to be Fred Flintstone. This was supposed to be Shaggy Dog. Um, they each had, there you go, um, they do have their little tags on them. And I'm like, oh, but really though? I mean, Shaggy the dog, okay. But this one was marked as Dumbo. Um, again, Flintstones. I'm like, I don't know that Fred ever had green hair. I mean, maybe there was an episode I'm not recalling, but... <laughs> It looks like he has a leaf on his head. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm forgetting an episode and you're all going to be like, oh, don't you remember? I'm going to be like, no, <laughs> I don't remember that. <sighs> Again, a lot of booze. Some of them like, you know, you've got like the NASCAR stuff. Um, not really what we're in the market for. Uh, so we're kind of perusing around here. And then I spot it. I was like, wait a minute. That vendor looks like they have some stuff. Um, here we've got Neil the Frog. These are priced individually at $22, which I think is a fantastic deal, um, especially for a collector. I loved this German candy container. He is, the body is, of course, cardboard. Um, I love him. He's priced at $66 though. Yeah. Which is very fair. I got to say, especially for the condition. I mean, look at that condition. It looks like he's new almost. I mean, it is amazing. Uh, definitely worth the $66 and a little bit more, uh, but I really wasn't willing to take the chance on him. Sadly, loved this koi uh, wall pocket here again. Now I'm going to say this in this booth, the vendor had things priced at retail. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, it didn't, it certainly didn't stop me from looking and getting exciting um, and wanting to film along with you and show you all the fun things like this little piggy bank that was only $10. And I was like, oh, but wait, that's a good deal. That's a good deal. It's Norcrest. Yeah. But unfortunately, she was missing a significant amount of her flowers. So I did elect to leave her behind. Love this little satin ball soldier here. I was showing this to Jason, um, but he said, I already have it. And I said, well, I guess you're going back on the shelf. And then I saw the little British soldier guy here or guard, I guess. Um, we passed on him. Now, I did find these left in. They're the Rooster um, Sugar and Creamer sets. These are going specifically to somebody, um, Midge Hey Girl. Uh, she collects them. She loves them. <laughs> 
They're coming to you. Now, we've got a lot of Fenton, hand-painted Fenton in here. Um, again, a lot of it was priced at retail. There's nothing wrong with that. There was a sale of 40% off, though. So if you were a collector and you were in the area and you were seeing something that you love, get down there, snatch it up. It is on sale. Um, but again, you know, the idea or concept of purchasing for resale, it wasn't there for me. Um, but again, I definitely wanted to capture that on camera because I thought it was beautiful. Loving these little can little candy containers, these little covered dishes, the rabbits, they're very springy. One of my personal favorites is the Schaefer Vauder here. You're seeing the shot glasses. You're seeing the little liquor decanter back there, that man holding up the woman. Um, these were produced during Prohibition, so you would be able to set out a little figurine. And it didn't contain liquor. No, it just sat on your knickknack shelf. So it was a great way to kind of hide your alcohol. There you're seeing a little Cupie. Now that is an older Cupie. Um, she's got her little sticker on her and she would have been marked Rose O'Neill. It's just one of those things you know from sight. Jason was definitely having a field day with a little dog there. Love these little Humpty Dumpty guys sitting on the wall. Um, they were priced at $45. So I said, well, you know, that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> little shell mouse. I'm surprised I didn't pick him up. This little one is absolutely adorable. Unfortunately, she's got significant damage to the face there. This is a hand-painted cloth. Um, $34 would be excellent as a price, even for a resale. Unfortunately, that damage really kept me away. Uh, it is a gunderful collection but it is produced of course by Gund um, but sadly that condition just it wasn't there seeing some chalkware souvenir pieces these were really interesting um, they were from Niagara Falls the condition was kind of all over the place though the vendor did price them accordingly it seemed to be five dollars for the set of four um, but again the thing that really kept me away from it was the overall condition that one had a, a complete net neck break and was repaired now the mama deer did seem to be in the best shape um but it just i don't know it did it really wasn't speaking to me the quality was very like meh are they deer yeah is the subject matter there yeah but the execution just wasn't what was there for me was this little folk art Pinocchio. I'm surprised I caught him. Um, he's so tiny. Look at him. He's articulated. He's so adorable. I loved him. I picked him up. Look at that little nose. Yes, he has some wear, but I think that wear really does add to his overall character. Now, this vendor definitely loved them, some Ellie Smith. <laughs> they had it displayed beautifully. Uh, Jason was definitely caught with the decanter here, and it did, of course, come with its cordial glasses, um, but he elected to leave it behind because of the price. Here we're seeing a little Piro the Clown. He is on a ceramic uh, covered dish. I had had this previously, and it did very well. This one is priced at $80, $18. There's, as indicated, a hairline on the leg. Um, do I capture it? You kind of. There we go. So it, it's a pretty significant hairline, and I really didn't want to risk picking that up and shipping it, especially the weather is so unpredictable. And when it gets very cold, which it can even at this time of year, those um, hairlines can become cracks and those become lost legs. <laughs> I said, no, no. Love that is, um, I believe that was an imperial glass Victorian egg. It was a modern reproduction. Um, those things are absolutely beautiful. If you can find the original Victorian ones, beautiful glass. Um, definitely wanted to capture it. Obviously, a lot of it is Fenton. I know Fenton is very popular um, right now. What is not as popular is this Owens glass. I absolutely love this. Um, I, you know, it is on par with Fostoria, in my opinion, in regards to the overall quality. The three pieces were priced at $72, which is very fair. Um, and in my opinion, it's much lower than what I think the quality of the glass would warrant. But it's just not very collectible. What are collectible are fairy lamps. These are, of course, Fenton. They are newer ones. I got to be honest with you. I didn't think the quality of the hand painting was really there. They were priced at $100 each. Um, and if the hand painting was better, I would have been more inclined to pick them up. But it looked very sophomoric, if you will. Um, I was very interested in the leaf one. 
I like that one. I like the execution of that, but at a hundred dollars, I, I couldn't justify it for the quality of the hand painting. I loved this pig. She is massive and lightweight, $75. She's very happy. She's definitely not going um, off to market to be turned into bacon, but I wanted to kind of show you the weight. I was tempted um, because the weight, it was really light. A lot of times these are, are, are heavier, but that it was like that composite material. I was tempted because I was like, well, the weight's not going to be bad. But then I was like, oh, but the dimensions are going to, are really going to be what hits it. This one we were seeing an Austrian Art Nouveau applied um, vase, very much done in the uh, Royal Ducks style. It was a later piece. However, this one was an earlier piece. This is much more in line with Royal Ducks with the applied florals and, of course, the fruit, the plums, apples, which, whatever you want to call them. This one was just generically labeled Austria. Um, I loved it. There was a little bit of damage to it, some chipping, which is kind of the norm for these. But because it wasn't labeled World of Ducks, I did elect to leave that one behind. These were really awesome. I love these little tiki guys. Um, they're done obviously in a terracotta or a redware. Um, very Polynesian. Loved them. Loved the teeth, the tumblers, the little mugs here. These guys. They have lived a life. Um, it's $40 for a set of four, which I thought was a really fair deal, um, especially given the overall condition of them. And it, of course, did include four mugs and four underplates. Blah. <laughs> This vendor had a little bit of everything for each of the holidays. We've got Easter here. That actually is a covered milk chocolate. And I was like, oh, we have some putt styled houses, the cardboard with the paint and the mica glitter on them. Um, a little above my price range for wanting to get for resale, though I will say as a collector, it was a really good deal. And then we've got like our smaller items that are tucked away back in here. We've got some honeycomb. We've got that little plastic headed Santa on what appears to be a satin ball. Um, and down below, again, some more honeycomb, some celluloid plastic dolls. I did see, of course, this little putts um, Santa here. He was marked at 19. I have quite a few of them. So I did decide to go ahead and leave him behind because I, I'm, you know, I can't add to the horde of those. Like I got to calm down. Now, what did really excite me was this Claire plush, C-L-A-R-E plush gingerbread man. Um, he was in phenomenal condition and the subject matter was really unusual. He was priced at $30, but given the unusual subject matter and the condition of the plush, I did go ahead and pick him up. Uh, I'm not really feeling that rubber face Santa. He was kind of me. He was a little squished down below. I was like, oh, it's a Halloween. Is that a Halloween postcard? It is. It is. But, but how much is it? How much is it? It was $15. I said, what? I definitely picked this one up. I was so excited. This is my first. I've never been able to get one of these at a reasonable price. $15 was definitely it. I was so excited. And what I was definitely excited about was this Red Wear Stacking Deer tea set. We've got the teapot on the bottom, the sugar, and then the creamer on top. It was absolutely adorable. It is kitschy. It is weird. It's unusual. So yeah, I picked it up. Why not? Well, guys, that is it. Happy holidays. We're going to wrap it up outside. <laughs> Alrighty guys, well there you have it today's video. I think it was a great time. I hope you guys had a good time. It is always a pleasure shopping with Jason and Tina. Um, we found some good stuff, don't you think? I'm excited. I'm excited. Alrighty guys, well that's going to wrap it up here. And um, again, as always, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye guys.